Good morning, folks. We had CME impact, geomagnetic storms, another solar flare, some climate forcing news to cover here as well. But we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and not in 193 angstrom view. It's the magnetosphere model of the CME impact, which occurred not long after yesterday's show. The solar wind showed a simultaneous jolt in all the telemetry markers with moderate speed and a nice bit of density enhancement. The geomagnetic effects began almost right away. We ended up spending the majority of the day in level one or two geomagnetic storms, KP5 and 6. There was a solid coupling to the event and it is taking its time making its way from the magnetosphere downward to the ionospheric storm corrections show the descent of the perturbation didn't really begin until this morning. Eyes open for electrical issues today, even though in terms of electrical fires and transformer fault trips, we saw an increased number of those already yesterday. We're back to the last 24 hours on the sun here, and we've got crackling but not much happening in the earth-facing heliographic longitudes until the very end of the sequence. Little flash from the central northern grouping, an impulsive M-class solar flare did not produce a CME, but which we will continue to monitor as that line of sunspots is developing magnetic complexity that will be needed for those bigger flares. Everywhere blue and red try to tango is a potential flare maker. Quick look at seismicity, two big quakes, four minutes apart here. Pretty significant atmospheric energy signals and global electric circuit potential there too. Let's go to the articles where we begin with a look at solar forcing of the atmospheric tides. They find that the solar cycle tends to have a dampening effect on the tides, where the diurnal heating cycle helps drive them. The same thing we saw last year with the solar and geomagnetic forcing of thermospheric super rotation is able to overcome it. When the sun gets active, its forcing overwhelms the light-based or irradiance forcing of those upper atmospheric layers. And if you caught the Thai GCM label in the title of that paper from last year, they have used it to confirm global scale effects and mechanistic action for those 2017 storms. Thai GCM stands for Thermosphere Ionosphere Electrodynamic General Circulation Model, and it is a half measure bringing these electric couplings into the mix, but only for the upper atmosphere. So far, they are not yet capable of fully translating these disturbances into global electric circuit forcing or cloud forcing or appropriate joule heating, but they are thinking electrically and joining those thoughts with the atmosphere, slowly creeping towards the recognition of solar climate forcing. We greatly appreciate your support. Still got eyes on the sun. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.